Today we are going to discuss about the fundamentals of server hardware. So part of the learning, uh, part of uh, uh, learning to the cloud computing that is infrastructure as a service delivery model uh, in Amazon cloud. Uh, I have shown you the learning path, uh, what should you know before, before you start learning the, uh, the AWS cloud or any other cloud platform that is uh, infrastructure as a service delivery model. So the first thing is the server hardware. Uh, so which is what we are going to do today. Uh, basics of networking, it, it may last for a day or two. Uh, it depends on your interaction levels. Uh, storage for sure it's, it will take two days of uh, you know, two different classes. Uh, the fundamentals of storage so, and uh, the operating system concepts, virtualization and the cloud computing. This is the path that is six topics and they may last for eight, uh, six topics, they may last for eight classes, eight sessions. Each session can be uh, one and a half hour or two hours, uh, but for today it's going to take one and a half hour for us from now. Uh, what am I going to cover here? Well, it's the big list, right? You hope you all have got an, a mail uh, about the topics. Uh, so every day you may get similar mails, uh, you know, teasing you, saying uh, the topic that uh, we may discuss tonight. And if you guys have some time to Google and to come with more more number of questions and to to get most out of uh, the interactive sessions here, I would really appreciate uh, that. I will never hesitate or I'll never uh, you know skip any question. Rather, I encourage you people to ask more questions. <coughs> and then, uh, so what is a server? A server form factors, a typical server architecture, major server components. How are servers different from the desktops? Gathering information about your server uh, hardware or hardware identification tools, server management tools or uh, importance of the hardware maintenance. Why should uh, you, uh, you care about uh, the hardware maintenance? And uh, uh, planning and testing hardware upgrades. How to justify the purchase of a new server or the server consolidation? So, as some of you have said, uh, that you are the server administrators, that you are the database administrators. At some point of your life, you you definitely have touch uh, touch these these topics in there, right? Uh, if you are a DBA, and when you are actually uh, about to install your database application on a server, uh, you know part of the pre checklist you should uh, be identifying what server model make and manufacture this and uh, does the hardware supports the application or not that is your database application uh, and some you know prerequisites so when you have to check the server hardware configuration you need a way to identify uh, the configured hardware resources right so that way uh, all these topics are very much useful to you uh, uh, at the data center level, at a system administrator role level, and even when you go to the cloud uh, level, this information certainly helps you a lot because no matter it is on-premises, no matter it is cloud or it is a virtualization platform, the hardware configuration is going to be the same. Okay, so with that said, uh, it's a lot of information that you're going to get here. With that said, let me quickly start uh, with the basics. That is, what is a server? Okay, so server is a durable hardware with reliability, availability and serviceability as the features. It also has got redundant components, hot swap, hot add capabilities to it. Okay, so you might have been, uh, you, you have been using your uh, personal level computers, personal uh, laptops, right. Uh, none of your devices have got the redundant uh, components on it. You do not have uh, redundant display. You do not have redundant memory modules, redundant CPU, redundant storage option, uh, redundant power supply. So you do not have any redundancy uh, for your personal devices. However, a server uh, is a device that has got reliability, right? It because it needs to be up and running 365 days, uh, 24 hours a day. Uh, availability, serviceability, and uh, these are called the RAS functions or RAS features and you must have the redundant components hot swap hot add capabilities redundant components is like you must be having two components if one fails the other must be 
uh, working of uh, to take an example you must be having two power supplies to the same server so that if one power supply fails the other will continue to work so that you the server is uh, continue to function as normal you must be having at least two hard disks those are configured in raid 1 uh, that is to mirror the hard disks so that if one hard disk fail your system will continue to work there are other raids as well but here i'm just taking an example to explain you uh, how the redundancy works at a server level and you also have uh, redundant network interface cards. If one fails, the other will continue to work. Operating system will take care of the teaming, uh, teaming how the failure or fail back works. Even your HBA cards will be redundant on a server. If one fails, the other will continue to work using uh, the multipathing technologies. Okay, That way, most of the components on the regular servers having the redundant components. And you should be able to do hot swap and hot add, meaning uh, if you see the rear side of the server, I will uh, maybe in next couple of minutes I'm going to demonstrate you how does uh, server look like. Uh, so the rear hand side of uh, the server, you look, you can see uh, the fans. Okay, the swam fans you can swap them uh, while the server is up and running. Okay, you can pull out uh, the fan from bay one. Uh, can you can swap that with a uh, fan in a different bay. Similarly. Uh, you can do a hot add uh, of your hardware components that is maybe let's say you your server is running with one power supply and you can add the other one or uh, your server uh, there is a hard disk failure happened uh, and it is configured in raid 1 5 or 1 0 uh, whichever the raid gives you the fault tolerance so if one hard disk fails you just can remove it while the server is up and running and you can add a new hard disk so that the raid will rebuild the hard disk with the data that way uh, a server is a hardware device uh, which has got RAT, RAS features, redundant components, hot add, hot swappability uh, capabilities. And these devices or these servers are designed for sustaining high volume of usage, high processor, uh, uh, memory, storage capacity, expansion slots, uh, whatnot. Right? So why these servers are designed to, uh, to sustain or uh, to give, I mean, to use uh, uh, high processing capacity, high memory, high storage, uh, and the expansion modules capacity. Because the servers are not the personal devices. We are not just going to uh, put a media player, use it for an hour, you know, or put a music player, use it for an hour, or open up a browser, just search the internet. It's not going to be the simple applications, but uh, applications that gonna get host on the server hardware is the enterprise class applications meaning the applications will be accessed by hundreds of thousands of lakhs of users and uh, their operations cannot be predicted if it is a database server uh, the users may be doing the read and write operations or uh, based on the role uh, users may just be doing uh, the read operations okay or uh, or if it is a video streaming application uh, users will be streaming the videos like uh, the YouTube so based on the kind of application that you host it's gonna definitely use a lot of processing capacity a lot of memory a lot of storage IO a lot of networking throughput and uh, at times you may need more number of uh, expansion slots to to keep more number of hard disks or to have more number of network interface cards put in put on or the more number of HBA cards put on to the server okay so uh, as the use cases of uh, the applications and uh, the type of applications that are going to get host on the servers uh, the servers need to be uh, you know the, the servers are designed to sustain high volume of usage of the resources and then when you use the resources at a high volume so what happens you drive uh, the car continuously days together weeks together months together uh, that's going to put a lot of pressure on the engine right uh, that way the same way when you continue to use your servers uh, you know without powering them off continuously there's going to be a lot of heat the components are going to get heat right so to 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 bring the temperature and to uh, the servers will operate optimally when they are uh, very cool the device is very cool physically if the device is very hot i mean you you normally see uh, the server will just go down saying high temperature at the server that's reason we put the servers into a, a special room and we call that as a data center okay 
uh, that's reason you need to have a, a dedicated place as they uh, as they uh, carry very important roles uh, and the roles are very important in terms of the business turnover and there are different other reasons when we get into that space but yes uh, these servers from a hardware standpoint have designed uh, to, to sustain high volume of usage of the resources. And the common type of the servers that you see is the web server, application server, file server, database server. Uh, these are the common type of servers that you would see in an industry. Okay, so these servers, when I say web server, it is not necessary. It's it's it is a single application. There are uh, lacks of applications that use uh, the web uh, server. It's either Apache or IIS, any of the web server. Uh, when I say application server, it is not just one server. Those who don't know, there can be thousands or lakhs of applications, uh, variety of applications that can be hosted. Same goes with file server. When I say file server, it is kind of a collaboration, uh, you know, way of collaborating uh, uh, to to share the content or documents. Okay, normally in in traditional data centers, you see the Windows operating system is configured with file share uh, role. Uh, so the files are configured with uh, Files are configured with uh, uh, with with permissions, with the delegation of the permissions, so it works fine. Uh, uh, the databases, you know, right? Database is not single; it's 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 a generic code. You have uh, RDBMS or NoSQL databases. You have uh, a big data nowadays, right? And even in RDS, you have different uh, database engines. Uh, in NoSQL, you have database engines. You have in in big data also. You have variety of uh, big data solutions available. So uh whatever you talk any kind of application you talk any kind of uh, uh, application that you touch in today's world be it internet facing or on premises data center uh, application it must have been hosted on a server hardware and that server hardware is uh, is a component uh, is a hardware component that that has ras features redundant components hot swap hot add capabilities and these servers are designed to sustain high volume of usage okay and then there can be uh, different uh, uh, you know th th there can be servers in different form factors the very traditional one that uh, at least the the era of server hardware started uh, with, uh, with the tower servers okay the tower servers are similar to the personal computers that we used to use and through nowadays it is all the laptops and more of our uh, tabs and the smartphones so this is how the tower, tower server looks like, the middle one. This is the one, okay? Wherein the cabin is vertically designed. Uh, there you have the motherboard. You have a fan to blow out the hot air. You have the expansion slots here. You have four hard disks in there. You have a space for your uh, uh, CD drive, right? A DVD drive and you have the power supply in here. So this is how the cabin is designed for the tower server and it is an entry level uh, server hardware right so uh, industry was using it for some time and then industry actually moved away from the tower servers and moved to uh, the rack mountable servers the second uh, evolution in the server hardware is the rack mountable servers uh, i i just do not wanted to stop saying the industry has moved to rack mountable servers but i wanted to tell you why did we move away from the tower servers to the rack mountable servers because guys this is the other side of uh, the coin that you are seeing you being into the application space and today you are you know making an attempt to understand the server hardware which is the other side of the coin because all this while server administrators are are doing this for you and for the first time, you are trying to learn it because of the profiles consolidation that's happening in the industry today. No longer, uh, I mean, I'm just deviating from the topic for a minute. So there is no longer a, a Windows administrator, no longer a Linux administrator, uh, a network engineer, storage engineer, or a database engineer, or SharePoint engineer, or a mail engineer. It is all consolidated, right? Everything is, uh, everything as a service today. Everything as a service today. So today, if you see, you don't have, you don't need a database engineer because uh, there is a, a managed database service available from Amazon Cloud. For that matter, from from Microsoft as well. Okay, uh, from Azure. So the database is installed, uh, configured, and managed by the provider. You just have to, you know, configure that endpoint. Uh, 
uh, it's similar to the ODBC connection and then start connecting your application use it you don't care about the patches upgrades uh, the backups right you don't care about them high availability it's all maintained by somebody else and then there is no profile of database administrator so in in the cloud today if you see the networking the VPC concepts in in the Azure you have virtual networks concepts so that it is about few right clicks you create a VPC create subnet create gateway configure the NACL security group that's all you are done you don't need a dedicated network engineer in there when it comes to storage you don't need a storage engineer it's it's a matter of right click say create a EBS volume attach it to the EC2 instance start using it boom that's all so the profiles are consolidating so this consolidation started when the concept of virtualization introduced in a data center in the year of 2006 from then uh, the industry was was actually uh, the consolidation was at actually at a data center level okay within the company itself and now that consolidation is actually extended to the cloud meaning um, the job opportunities of your company is controlled by somebody else okay that's in the form of cloud delivery so a reason that you are making an attempt today to learn server hardware is uh, to understand server hardware OS networking storage database virtualization cloud fundamentals everything uh, it is a holistic approach that you are following and then when you go and sit at a cloud level uh, cloud solution architect um, and then you know uh, you know how to design an application because you know all this okay so that's what so I'm coming back to the discussion again so we have moved uh, we have moved from the tower servers to the rack mountable servers here uh, the rack mountable servers are similar to this that you see in the window it's like the horizontal one okay so reason that we have moved away is because <coughs> the scalability was the problem with the tower servers and uh, the manageability of the servers is another problem because when you place the tower server in a data center uh, you know they I mean it's not an easy uh, it was not easy for us to set up the servers in the data center uh, and to organize them it is taking a lot of space and the in the rear hand side the cables uh, it is it is not so friendly and it is taking a lot of space and you are also not able to scale the components inside the server uh, to a greater extent for example if I wanted to have four sockets in here four CPU sockets uh, I cannot have if I wanted to have eight CPU sockets in there I cannot have okay so if I wanted to have some 24 hard disks in here I cannot have okay so the scalability was a problem to move away from uh, from tower servers to the rack mountable servers so in the rack mountable servers uh, it is actually organized this way as you see on the screen uh, it is available in standard width and length that, that fits to a four post rack I'll show you how does a rack look like and how you put uh, uh, the servers into it uh, typically uh, these are 444 mm wide and uh, 684 mm long okay so uh, but the height when it comes to height it's width and long or same but when it comes to height uh, these are available in different uh, you know uh, heights 1u 2u 4u uh, 1u stands for 2 inches so when you say hey I have a server of 1u that is a server that is height of 2 inches uh, 2u stands for 4 inches of height and 4u is 8 inches of height okay and these servers are mounted to the four post using uh, the rail kits okay so let's have a look at uh, how does this server how, do, how, how does it look like I'm just opening up uh, opening the browser in here So this is how the racks look like. Uh, rack is of what uh, uh, 44u in height. This total height is 44u, which is uh, 88 inches in height. 
okay a server can be available in two inches four inches and eight inches and the blade solutions are actually up to uh, 10u also it we will talk about them later uh, but this is of the rack look like and to that four post rack I'll tell you uh, yeah if you see this server is a 1u rack 1u rack mountable uh, server it is a 1u rack mountable server okay so it is a 2u HP rack mountable server okay you see how many hard disks are in there four 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 right there are 16 hard disks on on the rack mountable server you have the VGA port in there you have the USB uh, port in here okay so <coughs> I'm just trying to identify so when you order the rack uh, this is how it looks like okay it has uh, the doors to open both uh, front and in the rear side and in the rear hand side of the rack this is how it looks like you have the server you have the uh, TCP uh, I mean you have the cat5 cables connected or cat6 cables connected uh, you will also have uh, the fiber optic cables connected okay uh, this is how the cables would look like in the rear hand side of your, your racks okay so different cables are used I mean different cables uh, of different colors are used for different uh, type of communication I must have an image that shows how uh, how a server is pushed into the rack actually so this is how it looks like uh, the racks are in 42u in height and of course you have the the racks that are uh, you know a bit more high than 42u 44u also racks available but this is how it it looks like and you see there is a 1u server 1u server these are all the servers okay so where i mean deciding where to keep the server where to keep the storage array and where to keep the switches is also called as the data center designing fine so yes. yeah if you see here uh, You see uh, there is a rail kit that is mounted to the four posts here so that you can pull the server out and you can you can push the server in so that way it is easy uh, for you to place the servers inside the rack and to pull them out and push them into uh, the racks okay it's very simple it is like how you pull uh, this is how it looks like this is a rail kit okay to this to this kit you will just mount your server so that as you are mounting the server to the rack it is called rack mountable servers okay it's called the rack mountable servers so a fully a fully populated uh, uh, rack would look like would would look like this okay normally we, we maintain at least one u of gap in between the servers uh, just to make sure that the heat of one server is uh, is 
causing or disturbing uh, to is not disturbing the other servers okay that right so that way we just maintain uh, you know at least uh, one u of gap in between the servers and this is how it looks like once you populate uh, the rack so that's about your rack mountable servers uh, and the rack mountable servers we've used for uh, uh, for longer duration in the industry and then if we've moved from the rack mountable servers the next evolution in the server hardware is the blade servers right the blade servers are uh, are kind of a shared uh, hardware environment i say right some components are shared in the blade system on a on a rack mountable server you have uh, you know dedicated components on it including your power supplies network interface cards uh, fiber channel uh, connectivities uh, and uh, the, the the right hand side pass throughs uh, signal passing bus so there are many components that are shared uh, in your blade system where the same components are dedicated in the rack mountable server as the rack mountable server has got the independent components on it uh, and more number of components on it rather it's going to generate a lot of heat and it's going to consume a lot of power okay and uh, a traditional rack mountable server is available in uh, 4u height 4u is uh, like close to uh, 10 inches close to 10 inches and then the, like i said the, the the next evolution was the blade servers the blade servers are designed to overcome the challenges that we have in the rack mountable servers the rack mountable server would take a lot of space uh, and it have got the dedicated components on it as it has got the dedicated components it's gonna uh, take a lot of power uh, as it is taking a lot of power it is gonna generate a lot of heat so you need to have uh, more number of air filters and uh, more number of uh, uh, cooling units as well so to overcome those challenges uh, the industry next released I mean next reached a milestone of uh, the blade systems the blade systems are using certain com components as the shared components so let's see how does it look like You see, this is called a blade system. Uh, this is a HP uh, C7000 chassis, one that you see on the screen. It's similar to this. Uh, in this chassis, you can fit uh, 16 half-height blades, 16 half-height blades, and uh, nine, sorry, eight full-height blades. Half-height and full-height. Let me show you how does it look like. So this is a Dell PowerEdge, uh, sorry, Dell blade system. And a HP C7000 chassis. So this is how uh, the half-white blades look like. Uh, this is the entire chassis wherein you can have uh, 16 half-height uh, eight full height so uh, this is a blade itself right this portion is a blade so which is what you you can see in here and in the down this is another half height blade so one two three four five six seven eight eight in the uh, in the upside row eight in the downside row so there are total 16 so you can have uh, 16 half height or 8 full height uh, blades in uh, in a chassis or you can also do mix and match okay so until here you can use the half height blades which are like 6 into uh, to 12 and in the remaining four slots you just can use the entire uh, bay for one full height and the other the, the remaining entire bay for one so you have got 12 half height and two full height that way also you can you know you can use okay not just in HP you have the blade solutions in, in uh, Dell you have the blade solution in uh, Cisco you have blade solution from Nutanix so almost IBM almost all hardware vendors have the blade solutions in uh, but but the number of servers that you can place them is that the half height or half width it depends for example uh, if I take uh, Cisco UCS
for example if I take Cisco UCS if you see here it is half uh, width okay it is half width or full width uh, and maximum you can have here is half uh, eight half width uh, eight, half, eight half width and uh, four full width okay that's uh, how the Cisco blades look like otherwise the concept of blade system is same that in the right hand side you will be using the consolidated components let me show you The right side of the chassis, uh, this is how it looks like. One second, uh, let me find the right diagram that has got all components populated on it. You see, this is a, this is a real picture from the live data center seems so these are all the blowers that you see the fans that are blowing out the air and uh, this is your Ethernet pass through and this is your uh, virtual connect VC which has got uh, uh, the FC uh, cables connected to it okay so this way uh, the 16 blades that you have are sharing just 4 plus 4, 8 network interface cards here, 2 plus 2, uh, that is 4 uh, fiber optic cables here. If it would have been a rack mountable server, you must have uh, each server 2 network interface cards, each server 2 fiber optic cables, that is 4 in total per server. And 4 into 16, that is 64 cables in total is what you need. Uh, since it is a, a blade solution, 4 plus 4, 8 plus 4, 12. So 60 versus 12 and you know what a single fiber optic cable would cost you $600 a single fiber optic cable and imagine um, you know 60 cables versus 12 cables if it is just about the cable and how about the five uh, HBA card host bus adapter card how about your uh, network interface cards uh, the cables uh, port on the other hand side down the rack, on the switch side so it is all going to be spending a lot of expense uh, when you opt to the rack mountable servers but when you opt to uh, the blade servers it is just very less uh, number of cables and less amount of power less amount of uh, cooling units that are that are needed not just that and if you go for 16 rack mountable servers 16 into 4 uh, that is again 64 u which is 128 uh, inches of rack space is what you needed so per each rack if it is 40 u uh, four threes three racks is com three complete racks is what you need okay but if it is a blade server for 16 blades you are just going to take 10 u of space 10 u is what 20 inches where is 128 128 u and the 20 u yes come on See, actually, where is the HPA port here? I mean, in this picture, I mean, you. Let me share fiber optic. This is a one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I was I was showing you the number of cables, amount of space that is needed. So, especially space 128U uh, versus 10U. 10 you and in today's data centers you know right how much it costs you to have a single room rented and three rooms rented okay so uh, opting to the rack mount sorry blade servers would benefit you in lot uh, other ways not just in terms of uh, the space in in terms of the cables but it is in terms of uh, the management standpoint as well it is easy to ma maintain the blade systems than the rack mountable servers and the evolution of the hardware did not stop there uh, it was further uh, you know extended to the converged solutions like uh, Cisco UCS okay and uh, it was further extended I mean further uh, evolved to the hyper converged uh, hardware solutions like your Nutanix like your uh, Flexprod 
like your reblock meaning in the same rack you have storage you have uh, compute uh, you have networking everything put together in the same rack so that uh, the network the ivo the network ivo storage ivo don't have to travel uh, over the cables to long distance and come back which will definitely cause some amount of latency especially uh, to the database applications okay so sorry so uh, that way uh, server hardware knowledge the evolution of the server hardware is very much important and if you guys are interested to take this topic uh, you know further uh, maybe a do do a deep dive sessions you please uh, study the server plus uh, material um, i'll also give you the student manuals uh, you know in in couple of days when when you guys become the paid students I'll, I'll share that content with you so that you can gain the insights of it okay so this is about the server form factors and then talking about uh, the server architecture there are two types of server architecture or when I say architecture it is like the motherboard how the motherboard is designed and how the components are placed on motherboard it used to be uh, cement symmetrical multi-processing uh, architecture now it is non-uniform memory access so what was I just don't stop it right like I said I just don't say something and stop it but I'll give you the justification why it was SMP and why we are using NUMA today well uh, in SMP if you see the diagram that is on the screen okay uh, let's say you have some 2 TB of RAM right it's it's a very critical database application that you have uh, I mean reason I am taking database as an example uh, for all the exercises here we have most of the DBS in here right so let me talk in their terms uh, so let's say it is a critical database and you have 2 TB of uh, RAM configured uh, because the normal behavior of database is to load all data into memory and operate in memory right start uh, serving the requests from the content that is cached already cached from the memory so uh, if there are four sockets on the board when I say socket it is CPU 1 2 3 and 4 there are four processors each processor has got again the cores on it uh, now processor 1 uh, is serving so and so request query request so it has to access the memory and read some 500 MB of data while the processor 2 also trying to serve the similar query uh, I mean it is also trying to read some 200 MB of data Processor 3 is also trying to do some write operation. So the data is first written into the memory. That is about, again, 200 MB of data. Processor 4 is doing a heavy read operation. That is trying to do a 1 GB, uh, sorry, 1 TB of uh, data. Okay. So four processors are serving four different requests from the database engine. And they are close to operating 2 TB. Uh, of data read and write operation now the point is um, it is just like this in the morning every day uh, between 8 to 10 or 11 we all are driving from homes to office so uh, though we have got dedicated homes for ourselves uh, we have got the shared roads we have to use the same road to reach to office okay so though you have 2 TB of store, uh, memory capacity available here it is the same bus that every processor use to do the read and oper write operations the red one that you see here is called the bus so that bus is actually connected to all the processors and that has become the bottleneck uh, for processors to do the read and write operations if you are a database administrator and ever uh, engaged in in fixing a performance issue on a database it is not all about uh, always about uh, your indexing uh, in the databases or maybe a, a long lasting query operation uh, in your database or the stale processors that are taking more memory and CPU from your operating system or uh, the old generation CPU uh, I mean the hardware that you have but it is also about uh, the memory sorry the, the motherboard architecture that you have okay so it can also be the reason now you may be realizing that how important you know it is to know about the server hardware and uh, the hardware you know you know whenever you see uh, the server hardware specifications you see the benchmarks right so based on the benchmarks you need to 
buy the server hardware because if your requirement is some X and the server hardware that you are planning to buy is X minus 2 the capacity of it is X minus 2 then that definitely cannot serve your purpose okay so it is being an uh, application administrator uh, you know it is also important for you to know about the hardware and you are in the right class today to, to uh, gain that kind of knowledge so as the bus has become the bottleneck the industry is is of course uh, the other reason was the scalability right earlier we used to have servers at 512 uh, to be honest with you right when uh, when I, I started using the laptop at least or uh, the personal computers uh, 128 MB RAM uh, 256 MB RAM 512 MB RAM uh, 512 MB, MB RAM was kind of a super power uh, machine that we had 1 GB RAM is cannot be imagined uh, Intel dual core or core to dual processors was uh, the era and now today we have even the laptops configured with 16 cores of processing capacity uh, 32 GB of RAM or 64 GB of RAM right and the servers it's it's terabytes of RAM so as the amount of memory that is configured on servers is also increasing a lot with the introduction of big data that the the big data is a repository uh, to store the database data uh, from different database engines and that database that the big data repository can be used to uh, to generate a lot of queries okay so as such kind of applications are uh, you know hitting the market and they, their uh, hardware configuration needs are also at the same level so obviously there must be an evolution at the hardware level that is NUMA non-uniform memory access nodes so so memory is divided into the nodes here uh, let's say you have a four processor the same example here processor 0 1 uh, 2 and 3 you have some 2 TB of RAM again in this in this example so 2 TB of RAM is equally distributed into 512 GB here also 512 GB so for there are four NUMA nodes uh, that are distributed uh, that says 512 GB uh, 512 GB 512 GB and 512 GB now uh, on top of this you it's common that you have an operating system on top of that it's common that you have uh, an application right it's the same application let's say a database now if the database is um, it has got four processors running uh, four different requests running one is to do the write operation three is to do the read operation uh, which is in short the read and write operations uh, now what will happen is uh, CPU 0 will start serving the first operation uh, maybe to do a read operation so the CPU 0 has got a dedicated memory bank that is 512 GB the CPU 0 will will just use its dedicated bank so the other processors also use their own dedicated bank but they will not touch the bank of the other processor first point second point if there is a need that one processor need to touch the memory of the other processor they have some uh, some uh, buses in between so that this processor 0 can also use a bus to go and take some some amount of RAM from the other processor memory bank as well that is also possible but most of the times that is not needed first point second thing your operating system will make sure because this NUMA awareness is not just developed at the hardware level and if your operating system uh, never know uh, that it is a NUMA node what the operating system will do it will always uh, schedule the applications or processors on processor 0 that's what it does right let's say if processor 0 uh, is running at 50% of utilization it will continue to schedule more number of processes on the same processor because 50% is not too high but if this 50% of uh, processor is taking 1 TB of RAM then definitely you do not have 1 TB here it is just 512 so this awareness is extended to the operating systems and almost all operating systems today in the industry are NUMA aware non-uniform memory access so they know how many NUMA nodes that your server hardware have in this case we have four NUMA nodes if it is just two socket server there will be two NUMA nodes and the operating system will start scheduling your processors that your applications on the processors equally on the processors equally no matter even if the processor 
processor 0 is running at 20% and processor 0 1 is running at 30% also uh, the subsequent applications are scheduled equally on both the processors or all on the pro all on the process uh, sorry or on all the processors so equal distribution of the load on all the processors is done um, because the new awareness is extended to the operating systems how that was extended uh, your processor making companies have worked with the operating system um, developing companies that is Intel working with Microsoft uh, Linux distributions AMD working with Microsoft and the Linux distributions that's how it works okay so this is about your uh, server architecture and then major components of the server well uh, it's it's a motherboard and motherboard uh, is housed with many components on it right you have got processor in their memory and their internal storage other components like fan power supplies uh, IVO cords etc 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 and this is not so simple it's not like how simple I say it has got a processor but processor has got many things in it it has got many things on, on it so processor uh, has got uh, it is also called as a socket uh, it has got cores physical cores logical cores uh, it has got the catch it has got uh, uh, the processing power that is 2 gigahertz, 2.5 gigahertz, 2.2 gigahertz, 3 gigahertz. So the processing power, right? So hyper threading. So what all these things are? Well, uh, that's that discussion is beyond the scope of this learning. Uh, but I would recommend you and I would request you to write two pages of notes on uh, all four hardware resources. So the four critical hardware resources of any server is processor, memory, storage, and network. So please write handwritten notes of two pages about each of these resources. Venkat, are you kidding us? And do you think we are kids going to the school? Uh, it is 2017 and we are all working in the corporates like you and you are asking us to write two pages of handwritten notes on all the four hardware resources. Well, I mean, it's, it's my personal experience. I still remember the days, uh, that is 2006, uh, when I was working in Mindry in the night shifts. Uh, I was, uh, uh, as a punishment, I was put on night shift continuously for six months uh, by one of my Tamil friend, uh, the team lead, and I wanted to take that as a advantage. I was really going through. Uh, I I could really remember those days now as I speak to you. Okay. So I still remember I Google for the content and I uh, I've written things into my dairy that I had so I still remember just because I've I've written it on with my hand so uh, reason I say is because processor how processor works is different from how memory works if you don't know how a processor works then you cannot certainly cannot uh, fix a performance issue if you see there is an application that is using 90% of your compute power how you troubleshoot this issue if there is an application that is using 100% of your memory how will you troubleshoot this issue do you think that is a problem or do you think uh, that is a normal behavior if your kid is eating uh, 10 idli in the morning do you see that as a problem or do you see that as uh, your kid is gonna grow he's gonna get strong how do you consider that same way if your application is eating 100% of memory how do you see that if your application is taking 90% of your CPU utilization how do you see that so for you to understand that <laughs> you need to understand the server hardware behavior that is how the components will work your processor will work in uh, the time division multiplexing meaning uh, and at a given point of time only one application one application can be scheduled on the processor uh, the remaining must be on wait but in memory it is the space division multiplexing meaning at any given point of time at any given point of time multiple applications can access the memory and can use it as long as it run out of space right uh, same way storage and the network interface card these three work in a space division multiplexing uh, uh, way that multiple applications can access these resources and can make use of them however the processor is a time division multiplexing right you can divide the time um, for the applications however 
multiple applications cannot access the processor at the same uh, time and of course that is possible with the help of multi uh, threading uh, so I say you please Google about these four hardware resources and write two pages of notes and when you are strong at these area and you have to design an application and a, and a user come to you and say hey uh, I'm going to host a web application which is accessed by uh, initially some thousand users uh, and each user may uh, launch the application to read some uh, PDF document or to uh, to submit a form in there etc etc based on the inputs that you may get from from him you're gonna tell him hey you may have to buy server of this configuration you please submit a code with uh, the procurement team right so how will you give that capacity planning how will you convert the raw requirement and application engineer uh, the number of connections uh, the application behavior and so on so to a configuration of 2 GB RAM one CPU one network interface card 500 GB of hardware capacity uh, storage capacity how will you convert the user requirement into the configuration when you know about your hardware component and hardware components capacity right well enough of talking about the server components so please write it so please write it so and then uh, how the servers are different from the desktops or the personal computers how are they well it is easy uh, it's pretty straightforward the image that you see on the on the screen says everything the uh, the heavy duty it's heavy duty lorry that is de that is designed uh, to carry heavy workloads uh, for a for a longer duration um, and a fancy car that is, that is designed to meet the personal level use and to to drive with a luxury by by with with AC put on the music system is on so you you the passengers can sleep they can watch movies and so on right so the purpose of designing these two vehicles is completely different so your server hardware the purpose of designing your server hardware is completely different from the purpose of designing your personal computers the, the kind of components that are on um, and uh, and uh, the cost of those components are completely different okay so to move on how will you gather the uh, the information about your server hardware how do you at least know what processor do you have on the server right or uh, what brand what model uh, what make uh, is your server is okay well that information can be fetched uh, using different tools okay so the tools are this the Windows properties dialog box or you can just say uh, MS Info 32 in the run run and it will fetch you the information about your server uh, hardware configuration make and manufacture or, uh, or the other components as well or there is a tool available it's a free tool called uh, CPUs uh, CPU uh, ID uh, you should be able to download that tool install it on the servers and that fetches all information for you or you also have the built on uh, built-in tools like uh, OMSA open server ser open uh, manage OMSA open manage server administrator from Dell so that tool is used uh, to manage the Dell hardware okay similarly you have uh, uh, HP uh, OA onboarded onboard administrator or uh, you have uh, ILOs uh, for, for to, to know the server hardware information and you also have uh, something like UCS manager for the UCS hardware um, and of course the your, your IBM hardware or the other hardware solutions have the tools uh, to fetch the information about your server hardware okay and then the server management tools so right, to, to manage the server remotely uh, let's say that you have a, a server in US uh, and you are sitting here in India because you are a server administrator how will you manage the server well it is simple sir I'll take uh, the remote desktop of a server or I'll connect to the server uh, through SSH if it is a Linux operating system or the distribution of the Linux you're right but what will you do if the server is out of network or if the operating system part of the monthly patching uh, you've done with patching and you did a restart of the machine uh, it went for the power cycle but it is not coming up you waited for 10 minutes 15 30 minutes one hour and uh, your scheduled downtime for the patching activity is crossing um, the, the window downtime window 
then what will you do then how will you access the server that is in us you nor can call your teammates in us because the, it's a night time for them uh, and it's a planned activity you just cannot give a reason that the server is not coming up and i cannot access it so to to help or to address all these issues uh, every server hardware manufacturer or manufacturing company have designed a remote management tool uh, to their hardware so those remote management tools are different from uh, the names are different though the purpose is same the names are different from uh, company to company uh, if it is a dell uh, it's, it's called uh, the DRAC or OMSA. DRAC or OMSA, Open uh, Managed Server Administrator. Or if it is HP, it's called ILO or uh, the OA. Okay. And if it is a uh, IBM, it's called RSA. If it is a Cisco, it's called KVM or UCS Manager. So, based on the server hardware that you have, you have got uh, the remote management tools in place. And uh, how important the hardware maintenance is or why should you care about the server hardware maintenance well uh, the hardware system vendors have frequent uh, frequent system bios updates okay that is to fix uh, an issue or to enhance uh, the existing feature uh, and uh, uh, the bios are to support the updated applications or uh, the update or operation system patch levels okay or at times uh, there there can be bugs at different drivers maybe let's say you have a RAID controller or HBA card network interface card any other component that is on the server must have to have uh, the updated drivers or the firmware levels in place okay so uh, you might be aware like uh, most of you are DBS and there is one system administrator uh, if you ever contact your uh, your system administrator uh, saying hey there was a system down issue today uh, can you please let me know what was the reason they say if it is something that they can tell you they immediately give you the RCA uh, but if there is something that they have to talk to the hardware vendors or the operating system vendor they say hey we have contacted uh, the vendor and we have submitted the request this is so and so request and uh, we will publish the RCA soon when we get a response from them and after a couple of days you see another mail saying uh, from the system administrator saying Hey, we have uh, uh, the, the, the issue was caused because of uh, the outdated uh, device driver or the issue was caused because of the, because of, uh, the hard disk driver or the network interface card or so and so application driver uh, that that caused to 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 operating system to panic uh, and the the system went through the power cycle okay so um, here the reason is let's say you have the net Intel network interface card put on your server so the network interface card is designed by your Intel and the operating system is developed by Microsoft so how Microsoft operating system will control the network interface card to send the data out or to receive the data in so Intel is also developed the drivers a piece of software that understands how to control the network interface card and how to interact with the operating system whenever the operating system wanted to send some data out through the network interface card uh, the operating system will interact with the drivers the network interface card drivers and says hey this is the information that I wanted to send out please do it so when some information is coming of outside uh, from outside to the system the drivers of the network interface card says hey uh, dude we are receiving so and information please uh, store it in the hard disk so the drivers will interact with the operating system if there are no drivers you just cannot control those devices if you remember the good old days that we had uh, uh, those XP operating system uh, and the laptops or the personal computers once you install the XP operating system you must have to install the network drivers uh, the graphic drivers the sound drivers and so on otherwise your sound will not work your network interface card I mean the network you cannot connect to the internet or LAN uh, your graphics card doesn't work properly and so once you install the drivers then only it works because XP operating system do not have the drivers or it don't know a language to speak to the hardware components but later in Windows 7 uh, they have injected the most generic drivers the drivers that that talk to almost all kind of hardware uh, devices that we have today in the market okay and of course the same continued in Windows 10 Windows 8 as well when it comes to the server hardware you though the, the drivers are uh, you know available in the server operating system you still must have to install the latest 
firmware and the device drivers into the operating system into the machine otherwise uh, it's it's there are uh, you know the probability of the system going down many times in a week or in a day is very high is very high so it is strongly advised that you uh, maintain the firmware levels bios and the device drivers uh, to the latest got it and how will you do that so how will you uh, how will you uh, test and uh, and uh, do the firmware upgrades on your server let's say uh, if you straight away uh, if you straight away upload the device drivers or the firmware drivers into the server or you put the cd or you download the drivers onto the server and you kind of applying them to to the server um, the drivers are applied and then the system went down and it is not coming up so right? something went wrong or the device drivers are not working fine that caused the system to go out of network or the device drivers are not compatible with your server so the the hard disk is stopped working or the data on the hard disk is wiped out so there could be many possibilities so before you do that before you put anything on the production servers it is strongly advised it is strongly recommended that you do things on the test servers on the test bed first uh, and then you do things on the production servers though those drivers are very much tested in your uh, test and development environments uh, i mean uh, the test servers it is still advised that you at least test the same drivers in your uh, uh, data center area and then you apply them into uh, into the production servers so almost all companies i i know that uh, almost all companies will have the test servers uh, in different areas for for your applications you have the test bed Uh, for your server hardware you have the test bed for your upgrades you have the test bed so almost all applications have or all data center environments have the test uh, areas wherein you can try something before you try on the production environments so that's how you uh, test things and uh, and then you push them to the production environment uh, how to justify uh, how to how to justify the purchase of a new server well uh well uh whenever you buy a server okay uh, whenever you buy a server uh, there is a, a period that the server can be live after that you just have to throw it off okay and there are many other reasons why you need to buy a new server you being the server administrators you must know uh you know why should you buy a new server or or give a justification uh, i just want to hold on for a minute and tell you uh, maybe somebody thinking in the class saying winkit we are here to ask you uh, teach aws uh, administration or aws solution architect or system operations administrator and what are you teaching us uh, you are taking us back to the old days from the cloud computing from virtualization back to the server hardware days uh, are you doing it so well uh, one logical justification i can tell you is uh, the solution architect and system operations administrator uh, profiles of the aws cloud is delivering infrastructure as a service to the customers so infrastructure is nothing but uh, the server hardware os networking storage virtualization and so on so you must know all these components at a basic when you put a profile tomorrow maybe let's say your total years of experience is some 8 years of experience okay um you you have 8 years of experience and you uh, of that 8 years you are showing 4 years as uh, uh, the aws cloud administrator and 4 years into database administrator or uh, into the system admin or into the application uh, any other area okay 4 years the relevant experience into aws cloud so when you show that 4 years as the relevant experience into the cloud uh, the other 4 years experience into the database or into the server admin Uh, and you must be knowing all this information okay and you becoming the solution architect with this knowledge and you becoming the solution architect with this without this knowledge would make lot of difference okay this clearly shows that you are a data center guy and who have done the upskill program into the cloud so that is uh, appropriate uh, upskill program and you definitely have the demanding 
uh, you know opportunities and your profile will be in demand but if you are in from an irrelevant profile okay maybe you are on uh, um, MBA HR and you say that four years I was a HR and then I've come to cloud it's not that you cannot come but when you put some four years of experience into cloud that doesn't make relevance and your profile cannot be in demand okay uh, coming back to the discussion here there can be many reasons why you need to uh, buy a new server uh, you being the system administrator let's talk about it uh, you know what all scenarios you may have to buy uh, a new server and how will you justify that so the first thing is let's say you buy a server today uh, and in the server you hosted an application uh, that is serving the video content to some ton you uh, hundred users okay uh, and when it is serving the video content to hundred users uh, utilization of the server is uh, utilization of the server is uh, 30 percentage maybe after three months uh, everybody got to know about the application and they say hey so and so site is delivering good video content and we all should must go there so the word is spread on the in the, in the internet world uh, 100 users have become 1000 users and the server utilization uh, is hitting 60 percentage and that 1000 users have become 5000 users and the server utilization is hitting uh, 85 percentage or 90 percentage so you being the system administrator have to analyze the system utilization trend uh, and and then send us that nice report gather the performance statistics for the past three months or so uh, and make a nice email of plotting the graph and so on stating hey sir uh, dear sir or dear manager hi manager uh, so and so server is being utilized at 90 percentage of CPU memory resources today and if it continue to happen for next 20 to 30 days the server may end up I mean server may hit 100% utilization that would likely to cause the application to go down and that application is serving our, uh, our advertisement or marketing site of our, uh, our company or that is serving our uh, financial application of our company and that may hit our uh, financials directly the revenue of the company directly uh, right would request you to buy the new server uh, to do the server hardware upgradation and now depending upon the criticality of the server uh, the application to the business uh, the manager will further forward that email to the appropriate application team and they will have a discussion if required they will call you into it to, to discuss the details and then uh, they will put a new proposal to buy a new server hardware or to buy uh, to, uh, to buy a new EC2 instance in the cloud and they will add that server capacity to the application and then it will become normal right this uh, this is also called as a capacity management and of course it is not uh, I mean just considering the performance statistics and sending the mail is not ca cost, uh, called as a capacity management there are few other factors as well uh, but yes this is some kind of capacity management as well and not just that let's say uh, the server when you buy a server it's four years that the life cycle of it after the four years uh, from the purchase of the server the company would not support the server hardware issues then you have to give it for AMC extended uh, hardware support the AMC would cover another two years after six years from the purchase of the server hardware you just have to throw it off it is of no value zero value okay so when you are approaching that end of life uh, of the server hardware then you have to send the similar mail saying sir so and so server is approaching the end of life in the next two months uh, it will be reaching the end of life and uh, the server hardware is not supported uh, neither by uh, the vendor nor by sorry neither by the manufacturing company nor by the AMC companies and then depending upon the criticality of the application uh, your your company may take a decision whether to continue uh, whether to to buy a new hardware or to or to whether to do a hardware refresh or to just let it go okay uh, and the other reason is just like I said uh, you have an application that's not able to deliver the performance levels that the application uh, users are expecting okay so let's say it's a, it is a premium application like Hotstar that you buy the subscription for an year uh, for the premium uh, videos uh, and they said sir you will you will get the 4k quality videos or HD quality videos 
and when you pay the premium and when you're watching the video uh, it is just uh, you know the normal quality video okay that's because of the network capacity that it had or maybe uh, the hottest capacity or the performance levels that it had or it mean any of uh, the configuration item from the server hardware is not able to deliver the required performance levels of the application okay so then definitely the premium the paid customers would not wait for you right so they start complaining about the performance levels even that situation uh, looking at the benchmarks of the server hardware you have to buy the new one that meets your application needs so it could be any one of the reason that I mentioned in here you may have to buy a new server and this is how you give your justification to the to the manager or to the application teams okay and then server consolidation so this is a small piece from the server consolidation this slide we're gonna have a separate uh, class altogether to talk about the uh, virtualization uh, which is also called as the server server consolidation there I'm going to I mean it's a different level of discussion but today uh, it is to help you understand what is the server consolidation okay so if you understand uh, the server hardware evolution from tower server to the rack mountable from rack mountable to the blade systems converged hyper converged solutions uh, the whole point here is to reduce uh, the physical infrastructure so that you can save on cost on the same lines the next evolution was uh, the server consolidation or to virtualize the servers okay so uh, when you go for server virtualization on a single physical server you can run uh, you know many virtual instances based on the server hardware uh, configuration and based on the virtual servers configuration that you do but the average number of servers that you can run on a single physical server is 20 so instead of buying 20 physical servers you are just uh, buying one physical server and running 20 instances of the operating system on it so it is a straight benefit that you save 19 servers hardware capacity it's uh, the space it's the it's the uh, total cost of ownership of the 19 servers um, the other things like uh, the network interface uh, cables network cables fiber optic cables ports on the network switch ports on the fiber channel switch and so on and it is not just that application licenses and the operating system licenses so if it is a if it is a virtualized environment the way operating system license works the way application licenses like the database licenses work would it, it is in a different way so the licensing is something that you can save on you can reduce uh, the hardware maintenance you can reduce uh, the operating cost like the electric bills the cooling uh, the rack space that is needed so the server consolidation will benefit you in in many other ways uh, and we will see uh, an extensive discussion in the server virtualization class uh, but for, for now uh, this is about your server consolidation server consolidation is to reduce the footprint of the physical servers in a data center by virtualizing this by virtualizing them with the help of virtualization operating systems that brings us to the end of the uh, module here uh, now you know what is a server server is uh, a piece of hardware that has got RAS uh, features redundant component hot add hot uh, swappable uh, you know functions Server form factors, the tower server, rack mountable server, blade servers, uh, converged, hyper converged hardware solutions. It is the evaluation of the server hardware. Uh, server architecture, it's a motherboard architecture, SMP, symmetric multiprocessing, and NUMA. And you know what it is and why we moved away from SMP to NUMA. And today's almost every server is being shipped with NUMA architecture, no SMP. Uh, servers are different from the desktops. I still remember the image that I put that is a heavy duty. Uh, triple RE versus a fancy car a luxury car that we had similarly the purpose of the server is completely different from the personal computers how will you gather the information with the help of the management tools and the operating system built-in utilities how will you manage the server remotely well with the help of the remote management tools how the hardware maintenance is important what will happen if you don't do it so uh, you know the, the all kind of panics happen because of the driver mismatch or the outdated drivers or the firmware levels how will you test and uh, do the upgrade of the server hardware well you do, you first do it on the test bed and then you push the changes onto the production environment how will you buy or how will you justify a new server purchase uh, many reasons right the end of life uh, the benchmarks or uh, or uh, the utilization levels right many many reasons and the server consolidation to reduce the footprint of the physical servers 
Hope you all have enjoyed the session today. Uh, now you can ask me if you have any questions.